We thank Dr. Carson for a brilliant lecture. Uh, there are we have time for a few questions. Uh, there are microphones in, in, the, in either aisles. If you would make your questions short so we can be able to answer as many as possible. Dr. Carsonson. Good morning. My name is Bill Hazard. I'm a geriatrician. And I would be interested in your comments on gender and reproductive um, capabilities across the lifespan as they may alter the course of the lifespan and also duration. This was a masterful presentation. It raises a lot of questions. <laughs> Aren't you nice? Thank you. Well, I'm not sure I understand the question before you, before you go back. You're saying differences by gender in reproduction. Yes. Um, and in what way? In the sense that one would, at least I would assume from a genetic standpoint, that reproduction is really what drives a lot of longevity in the long run, as, as you indicate. And my, my bias and my impulse is that females are gifted in reproduction and their lives are may be focused and programmed according to reproductive potential, perhaps more than men in, in a different way. Oh, I see, Fair okay, enough? yes. You know, uh, people have, have um, pondered for a long time why we see this gender difference in life expectancy. Um, and there are some theories that some of that is that the selection processes were stronger for females than for males uh, because of, of pregnancy and childbirth. And so we see a more highly selected uh, group of females than males. We don't know why women live longer than men, uh, but that's one of the, uh, um, I think, really reasonable uh, explanations. Accounts, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is George Hill from Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for your presentation. It was, it was very stimulating and it was also very thoughtful and kind of emotional. You, you obviously showed that you're sensitive to individuals who are getting old, like some of the people in the room. Not me, but some no, of the people no. in the room. <laughs> um, one of the things that I thought I, I, I wanted to ask was, you showed a lot of slides, and you touched on it at the end with Adler's work, but you showed a lot of slides that talked about uh, longevity and, and the length of time individuals were living. Uh, could you comment again from your experience on what affect uh, health disparities and uh, uh, individuals' health disparities and individuals living under different conditions than, than the majority population mm -hmm. uh, have. For example, you noted 47.3 years was the life expectancy in 1900. From your experience, how does that change when you're dealing with individuals who are living in crowded conditions and of different races and cultures? And again, right. thanks. Thank you. You know, I think differences in life expectancy by socioeconomic status within this country and also um, that vary by country around the world uh, show us that, uh, show us and, and really reveal the power of the environment on aging and aging outcomes. Um, we see close to 20 year differences in life expectancy between say affluent women who live longer than men and um, uneducated uh, African-American men. Uh, that is a huge <laughs> difference, which tells us that it isn't about some inherent uh, uh, hardiness. It's about the world we live in and how we interact with that world. And it should be helping to focus us on those disparities in environments and modifying them so that we can truly uh, generate um, high quality long lives for the entire population. You know, if there's, if there's anything 
uh, these disparities are so clear now and so pronounced that my hope is that they will begin to um, spark self-interest among the affluent in the, in the full population. Um, because at this point, we, you know, we've got to bring everybody along or, or we're all going to suffer. Uh, the entire population will. So the evidence, I think, is clear, and now we just need to uh, get the political will and the funding and, and put in the effort to make these disparities less pronounced. Her part is Columbia University and New York Presbyterian Hospital. It's known that uh, mental illness usually has the effect of reducing the longevity of people who suffer. Are there studies or do you have any data on the effect to which that affects the aggregate data? Yeah, uh, it's a really good um, question and it has been examined uh, in, in the literature. You know, it could be that it looks like older people are doing so well because they're, they're a highly selected group, and, and they are a highly selected group. But emotionally, we're seeing uh, well, two things. One is um, we're, we're seeing the improvement in emotion beginning in midlife and really kind of leveling in old age. So most of the improvement is coming in you know, mid to early late life uh, before we see too much mortality selection. But people have always lo also looked directly at that to see if um, uh, conditions like clinical depression could account for it. And there, it, there aren't enough deaths associated with mental illness to account for the big effects that we're seeing in the population. Uh, people have looked at that. It's a really important issue. Thank you. Uh, Robert Brooke from UCLA. Uh, you presented two streams of data, one about biology and one about inequalities. And the question I have is, do you believe that biological research and biology is strong enough and influential enough in the next 20 years to overcome the wealth and income problems we have in this country, or should the fundamental work to improve longevity in life be on wealth and inequality, as opposed to going back to the hope for biology? Well, <laughs> I deeply believe we have to do both. Um, <laughs> shall I leave it at that? <laughs> Way to go, Bob. I want to thank Dr. Carson for a wonderful lecture. What about another round of applause for Dr. Kansas? <laughs> so I, we're due for a break. Um, I want to make sure that you all know that we, in fact, have uh, the new class of 2015 announced. And actually, as you go outside the registration desk, you'll be able to pick up those distinguished new members who's joining this uh, great organization. Also, last night we gave out the member award and CISO award. And instead of at this point today, we changed the, uh, the um, shall we say, the tradition. Please make sure that you have a chance to uh, congratulate some of the awardees. So we're going to have a short break, and we'll reconvene very shortly. Thank you.